so frustrating to learn that he could get away with everything and she even in moments when she was just protecting herself she had to think twice about whether it was okay to tell someone to not follow her she did nothing wrong and she still had to walk this very very fine line for people to take her seriously and give her even a tiny tiny slice of the justice that she deserved my fourth recommendation is this book which is heavily annotated it's my copy of chanel miller's know my name if you don't live under a rock, there's no way you don't know about this book because this was one of the most talked about on the news, yeah. like on media. And deserving of every piece of attention. Yeah. And it's about the story of the author, Chanel Miller, when, yes. and trigger yes. warning, uh, she was raped when while she was unconscious mm-hmm. by Rock Turner while he was a freshman at Stanford. The only thing I want to say about this before you go into your whole thing is that I got chills reading this book because I went to Stanford. I was on campus when the trial and all this stuff was happening. When Stanford denied her the plaque that she wanted, like the quote that she wanted on her plaque. It makes me so sad to read this and see how much emotional turmoil was happening that's so close to me. Because we get emails from Stanford because how do they not address it to their own students? I'm just interested to see what you think because you're a little bit more removed geographically from the book. This book took me forever to read because it was so hard. <laughs> I would read a sentence, underline it, ponder it, shed a tear over it, and move on. Like, like that was my experience of going through the book. I think the central question of this book is, what do you do when you've put your whole life on pause to pursue justice, but then justice becomes more and more elusive the more you pursue it? I think like that was, like to me, like the recurring challenge that she faced throughout the book. Um, so yeah, like you said, in 2015, Brock Turner raped an unconscious woman and he was issued a ridiculously lenient sentence of what, six months? And he ended up only serving three months of it. Um, And in response, Chanel Miller, then only known as Emily Doe, she wrote a really powerful victim impact statement and it began, you don't know me, but you've been inside me and that's why we're here today. And her victim impact statement was compelling all the way through. And it's just so amazing how like this book of hundreds of pages is like equally compelling all the way through. Like it's it's so long, but it like never loses her voice. It's just truly so like gripping all the way through. It details her journey from the night of the assault to the present day. Uh, so there are so many things I want to say about this. What I love about this book is that she makes every feeling that she experiences so like knowable and like transparent to the readers through really simple and like poignant examples and analogies. Um, she also describes how like every twist and turn of the legal proceeding impacted her and her family. So there was a hearing that was scheduled and her sister was one of the, uh, one of the witnesses. And so her sister uh, spoke to all her teachers, requested time off of school, um, decided to delay her finals, was going to fly home, right? Like it was a big logistical task to be ready for this hearing. And then whoever's deciding the date of the hearing just calls her and says, oh, we're postponing it. Whatever. Yeah. And just this like lack like, of... I can't or- even imagine like what she even said to her teachers to get that time off in the first yeah. place, right? And just her whole life was revolving around the schedule of these hearings and like, you know, trying to pursue justice for what happened to her. Um, and then, you know, this person just very cavalierly was like, oh, we're going to delay the hearing. And just everyone's life was turned upside down again. She does a really amazing job helping people to recognize the really insidious logic of purity culture and victim shaming that shaped what she and so many other survivors go through. One reality that she helps viewers to understand is like the ever expanding gap between society and the legal system's demand for her perfection uh, versus the leniency that Brock Turner experiences. Um, and he gets this leniency because he's a white man, because he hired a really powerful legal team, whereas- They kept quoting like his swim record. Yeah. It's like, what does that have to do with this trial in yeah. any way? It's like, oh, he has so much potential as a swimmer. Like that's so freaking irrelevant at this point, right? And whereas for her, um, like every single one of her emotions and actions are scrutinized. Like a really memorable part of the book is she is in Providence one summer for an art program and these men were following her home like consistently. And one night she just got fed up and she just wanted to go up to the car and like cuss this person out and tell them to go away because she was feeling unsafe. And then she realized, oh my gosh, what would happen if this story got back to California 
and his lawyers heard it, they would then use this against me. They would say, she's crazy. She acts out. She's like not in right mind. And it's, it just was so frustrating to learn that he could get away with everything. And she, even in moments when she was just protecting herself, she had to think twice about whether it was okay to tell someone to not follow her. At one point, she says, in court, I wondered what behavior was acceptable for a victim. What tone? I learned that if you're angry, you're defensive. If you're flat, you're apathetic. Too upbeat, you're a suspect. If you weep, you're hysterical. Being too emotional made you unreliable. Being unemotional made you unaffected. How should I balance it all? And that was, ah, uh, she did nothing wrong. Like she was in the right the whole time and she still had to walk this very, very fine line for people to take her seriously and give her even a tiny, tiny slice of the justice that she deserved. Like, even though there were so few marks against her character, uh, Brock Turner's lawyer still found so many things to say against her and make her look, look suspect. And it was also just really heartbreaking and interesting to see the way they questioned her and how they cornered her into saying things that made her look bad, even though she truly had nothing to apologize Like she was about. too inebriated. Like, mm-hmm. so she probably consented. She just doesn't remember. Yeah. They really tried to figure out is was she drunk and or not. And they, they yeah, and her. like they were nitpicking all the details that she was offering. But with Brock Turner, he said something completely different in the trial than he did like when the detective questioned him the very first day. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Like he was like, oh, I was really drunk. And like, no, I don't think she said anything. Uh, blah, 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 Just these glaring, then, glaring mistakes glaring yeah. like discrepancies and then and yeah and then in the trial like he completely fabricates a whole new story with his lawyer yes yeah um and like just the way they pressured her they would ask her a question and say is that right is that correct blah blah like oh just so frustrating to read um and this book really transcends time and place in that it's relevant to people like there are so many women around the world who like experience this sort of harassment and assault Um, But at the same time, it's also very specific in time and place. And she really draws the lines connecting. There was a shooting at uh, UC Santa Barbara. She connects it with Trump's election. She just like really connects how all like all these current events that were happening around the time of her hearing and of the case, she connects them all together. So the book is an amazing balance of um, being so specific to this time in place and like see helping us see how all these different events are connected but it's also so generalizable and so relatable as she had so many readers email her and send her mail saying like thank you you just like gave voice to my story when you just mentioned school shooting Mm -hmm. um did you know that march 2020 was the first march in decades that we haven't had a school shooting and it's because of covid and schools are closed no yeah it's easy for people to see these events as very one-off, but there is always a trend, there is always a pattern. Mm-hmm. I think everyone needs to read this book. Everyone needs to wake up and know that the world is messed up, <laughs> and there needs to be change. I know a lot of women who've read this book. I need to see more men read this book, because the men are the ones in power, and they're the ones who can make the most immediate change. Mm-hmm. And they're the ones often talking to their guy friends and influencing how they think about how they should behave at parties, how they should treat women, how they should woo women. Yeah. Also, it's interesting because or, I was talking to an f- old friend um, from Stanford, and we were talking about how our freshman year was when Stanford decided to stop being very political. That's when Black Lives Matter was happening. That's when this whole Brock Turner case was happening. That's when the Christine Blasey Ford case was happening. And both the, the two that I just mentioned are very relevant to Stanford. Um And I think it's also a push for institutions to, like, even schools and universities to also take responsibility. They were so easy to wipe their hands clean and be like, oh, like, but the other girl, the girl, she wasn't a student. So, like, I don't know. We're honoring her by placing this plaque on the ground where this happened, and we're not even going to choose the quote that she wanted. Yeah, we're just going to do, it's all, it's, it will all be fine in time. But they have, they have changed it. It is the quote that she wanted. Good. So. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So. Everyone should read it.